Another day, another recap. Welcome back as we dive into one of my all-time favorite films, Nightcrawler. This psychological action thriller promises to change the way you view news and media. Enjoy the recap. The film starts with a view of Los Angeles. Someone's busy cutting a fence wire when out of the blue, a security guard pulls up. Louis Bloom, the man at the fence, has a chat with the guard. The guard asks Louis for his ID, but he gets distracted by the guard's shiny watch. Without warning, he pounces on the guard, snatching his watch and making a quick getaway. Later, we find Louis at a scrapyard, trying to make a buck by selling the fence wire and other metal bits he's gathered. He tries to haggle with the yard owner, but the man stands firm on his price. Louis, ever the opportunist, even tries to score a job there. He launches into a rehearsed speech, rattling off what sounds like a made-up resume. The yard owner isn't impressed and declines. Lewis doesn't give up easily, but the owner makes it clear, he's not in the business of hiring thieves. Later on, we find Lewis cruising down the freeway when suddenly, a police car zooms by. Following his curiosity, he discovers a car wreck with police officers trying to help an injured woman. Just as Lewis takes this in, a news van arrives on the scene. Joe, a cameraman, hurries out to capture footage of the accident. Lewis, always on the lookout for opportunities, watches Joe with keen interest. Sensing a potential job, Lewis approaches him to see if he's hiring. But Joe, without missing a beat, flatly rejects him with a blunt no. He quickly calls out to Marcus, his colleague, hinting that there's another emergency to attend to. The next morning, we're with Lewis in his apartment. He's flicking through TV channels until he lands on the news report of the car crash from the night before. The footage captured by the news team plays out, and the reporter commends the officers, labeling them as heroes. Later, Lewis is at the beach, and there's a brief moment where we see someone parking their bike. In the next scene, Lewis is at a pawn shop, where he's trying to sell the same bike. Using his silver tongue, he manages to negotiate a price of $800 as well as a camcorder and a police radio scanner. Night falls, and we see Lewis sitting in his car, tuned into the chatter of police dispatch calls. Following one of these calls, he speeds off to the scene. But as soon as he starts capturing footage, the police tell him to get lost. As Lewis tries to film more incidents throughout the night, he keeps meeting the same reaction from the officers. They want him gone. Then, Lewis arrives at a scene of a shooting. Another news cameraman is already there, recording the chaos. But Lewis, ever the risk-taker, ventures too close for comfort. The police notice and firmly instruct both Lewis and the other cameraman to step back. Under the bright lights of local news station KWLA6, Lewis walks in, holding his video footage. As he navigates through the station, he spots a few editors engrossed in their work. He attempts to ask them for directions, but it's clear they're in the midst of a crunch, in dire need of some critical footage. Seizing the opportunity, he presents his footage to Nina, the head news editor, and her right-hand man, Frank. After reviewing it, they decide it's just what they need and agree to buy it for $250. They frame the footage with a narrative about the rise of hijackers in the area. Nina advises Lewis to invest in better equipment, and urges him to bring any new footage straight to her. The sun rises, and Lewis is glued to his TV. He watches intently as news anchors detail of the tragic event of an elderly man ruthlessly gunned down by a hijacker who wanted his car. Lewis, oddly proud of capturing this footage, saves the file like a collector's item. He then starts researching police call codes, scribbling down notes to familiarize himself with their meanings. Later, we find Lewis at a local fast food joint. A young man named Rick joins him. It's clear this is some kind of interview, Lewis, ever the opportunist, spins a tale about being part of a major news network. Rick, desperate for work and currently without a home, listens keenly. Lewis, sensing Rick's vulnerability, offers him a job as his navigator and scanner listener for a mere $30 a night. With little choice, Rick accepts. Lewis and Rick begin their partnership by monitoring the police scanner intently. After a prolonged wait, a call piques their interest. With Lewis at the wheel and Rick navigating, they race to the crime scene. Due to Rick's nervousness and a map misread, they arrive later than they hoped. Joe is already there and doesn't miss the opportunity to mock Lewis. On the way to their next stop, Lewis tells Rick that fear is false evidence appearing real. At their next stop, a shooting scene, they encounter a distressed woman who mentioned she had warned the police about potential danger weeks prior. Recognizing an opportunity for exclusive footage, Lewis stealthily enters the crime scene from a side entrance, making his way into the house and filming the aftermath of the crime scene. Right after capturing the scene, Lewis rushes to KWLA, where Nina is taken aback by the footage he presents. Frank raises concerns, questioning Lewis's methods, but Nina quiets him, hinting that Lewis could be a big name in the news world someday. Before exiting, he briefly takes a seat, savoring a moment in the anchor's chair. Transitioning, we see Lewis at home, deeply engrossed in his own footage being broadcasted on the news. He meticulously saves the segment. 
Together, Lewis and Rick venture night after night, recording incidents that range from unsettling to downright disturbing. Lewis's collection keeps growing, cementing his prowess in the trade. The scene shifts to a gas station, where Lewis, now in an upgraded car, receives word of a major car accident. Without hesitation, he runs a red light and astonishingly reaches the crash site before even the authorities. In a jaw-dropping move, he rearranges the scene, relocating a victim's body for a clearer video angle. As the sounds of sirens grow louder and other media crews start to appear, he calmly makes his exit, as Joe can't help but express his frustration. As dawn breaks, we find ourselves in the TV studio, where Lewis stands beside Nina, poised to present the day's top stories. Amidst the hustle, he ventures a personal invitation, asking her to dinner. She hesitates, unsure of her response. Upon leaving the studio, Lewis is met by Joe, who proposes a job opportunity. Managing another one of his news vans, Lewis declines flatly, and despite Joe's attempts at persuasion, remains unmoved. This leaves Joe fuming as he departs. The scene transitions to a cozy Mexican restaurant where Nina and Lewis share a table. He showers her with compliments, but the atmosphere shifts as Lewis speaks candidly. He reminds her of her track record in the news industry, pointing out her tendency to lose jobs every couple of years. With her next transition supposedly due soon, he subtly warns her of the influence he holds, implying he has the power to shape her future in the industry. As night falls, Lewis and Rick are en route to cover a hit and run. But an urgent news alert on the radio changes their plans. A plane has crashed. Racing to the site, they find they've been outpaced. Joe has already wrapped up filming. Later at KWLA, tension fills the air when Lewis meets Nina. She's visibly upset. Missing the plane crash footage means Lewis doesn't have the major scoop she was counting on, especially with her contract renewal looming. Frustrated, she reminds him of the stakes and hurries away. The scene then shifts to Jake's apartment. The hum of a news report showcasing Joe's plane crash footage fills the room. Jake smacks the bathroom mirror, shattering it. The sun rises on a new day, revealing Lewis beneath Joe's news van, working on something. After finishing his mysterious task, he slips away unnoticed. That very night, Lewis and Rick race to report on a single vehicle accident. On arrival, they see that the wrecked vehicle is none other than Joe's van, which has met a violent end. As paramedics rush Joe towards the waiting ambulance, Lewis captures the unfolding drama on camera. Joe, despite his injuries, lifts his gaze and locks eyes with Lewis, a mix of emotions playing in them. The night doesn't end there for the pair. Roaring down the highway, their police scanner crackles to life, announcing a home invasion in progress. Without missing a beat, Lewis hits the accelerator, determined to reach the scene before the police do. Lewis eagerly takes out his camcorder and dashes up the driveway, excitement evident. But as he nears the house, the alarming sound of gunshots reaches his ears. Suddenly, two men burst from the house. Lewis, thinking quickly, ducks behind some bushes, keeping his camcorder on. From his hidden spot, he captures the two men making a hurried escape in a black SUV. Once the coast is clear, Lewis, with camera still recording, approaches the house. He first notices a discarded shotgun outside. He cautiously steps inside, and the sight that greets him is grim. A woman lies motionless on the sofa. Following a blood trail, he heads upstairs, heart pounding. He enters a baby's room, but to his relief, the crib is empty. However, as he continues exploring, he discovers another lifeless woman on a bed. Rushing downstairs to the kitchen, Lewis hears faint coughing. He finds a man, critically injured and lying in a pool of blood. Just then, Rick arrives at the front door, worriedly searching for Lewis. Hearing the distant wail of police sirens, they make a quick exit. They scramble to their car and speed away, narrowly avoiding a police car. Back in town, Lewis instructs Rick to stay in the car. He then works on the footage, carefully editing out any evidence of the two men and their vehicle. Walking with unmistakable confidence, Lewis enters KWLA, presenting Nina with the shocking footage he's captured. The entire room falls silent as Nina and her team watch, their faces a mix of astonishment and disbelief. Questions of legality arise, so an expert is consulted. The verdict, the footage can be aired, provided the specific address is omitted and faces are blurred. When the room clears, negotiations between Nina and Lewis commence, things grow intense. Lewis firmly states his terms, if his asking price isn't met, he'll approach a rival news outlet willing to pay more. But that's not all. Lewis wants to introduce himself to the KWLA team as the president of his own company, Video Production News, and desires on-air credit. Following their discussion, Nina introduces Lewis to her colleagues. They gather in the production room, ready to air Lewis's disturbing footage. As the news segment begins, viewers are exposed to the chilling scenes he recorded. The anchor, under Nina's direction, emphasizes the tragedy's unexpectedness in what was known as a safe neighborhood. Words like savage and vicious punctuate the report. 
The haunting image of the empty crib, coupled with the knowledge of three fatalities, is designed to captivate viewers and keep them coming back for updates. As they transition to a commercial break, a field reporter mentions that the police wish to speak to the videographer. Lewis, undeterred, instructs him to provide only his company name. Early the next day, Lewis is watching the news with every channel replaying the events from the night before. But he is interrupted by a knock. Standing outside are Detective Frontieri and Detective Lieberman, her partner. Once inside, their questions begin. They want to know everything about the triple homicide Lewis captured on film. Lewis mentions spotting two men fleeing in an SUV when he arrived at the scene. However, he only hands over the edited footage, conveniently missing the two culprits and their vehicle. Satisfied for the moment, the detectives take the edited video and depart. But Lewis isn't done. Taking on a detective role himself, he pulls up the raw footage. He gets a clearer view of the two men as well as the SUV's license plate. Quick online searching allows him to locate the vehicle owner's address. In the early evening, Lewis informs Rick that he's discovered where the killer lives. Lewis suggests they track the SUV, hoping to find a prime location to capture footage. Although Rick is filled with anxiety, believing it's best to notify the authorities, Lewis has different plans. Pulling over, Lewis announces he's promoting Rick to executive vice president and will also give him a salary boost to $75 a night. They then position their vehicle near the killer's house, waiting patiently. Lewis mentions a $50,000 reward, explaining his desire to record the police during their intervention, whether it's an arrest or a more intense confrontation. But he wants it all to transpire in a safer community for the sake of better news coverage. Rick sees an opportunity and demands half the reward. Lewis resists, but Rick insinuates he could inform the police about Lewis not reporting it to them. Feeling the weight of Rick's blackmail, he begrudgingly agrees to split it 50 to 50. After some time, one of the men emerges from the house and drives away. Without hesitation, the duo trail behind him. As they follow, the man makes a stop to pick up another individual, the second killer. Their journey leads them to a petrol station and later, a fast food joint. Opting for a strategic location, Lewis and Rick park across the street. Taking action, Lewis dials 911, alerting them about the two men believed to be involved in the previous night's triple murder. He offers a detailed description, adding that they might be armed, even though he is uncertain. Hanging up, the police scanner announces his call to all units available, and now it gets exciting. Lewis instructs Rick to position himself further down the road with his camera. Annoyed, he protests with some swearing. Lewis reminds Rick of their 50-50 deal and warns him not to back out. Reluctantly, Rick grabs the gear and heads to the designated spot, while Lewis stays in the car to film. Soon after, a police vehicle comes into view. The officers step out and head into the diner, seemingly in the mood for a meal. But Lewis catches a glimpse of one suspect discreetly brandishing a weapon under the table. More police vehicles pull up. As two more officers join their comrades inside, chaos ensues. Gunfire erupts. An officer is hit, and the two culprits are injured, resulting in one fatality and the other hastily making an escape in the SUV. A dramatic car chase unfolds. Lewis, not one to miss the action, trails closely behind the police. They fly through street after street until they speed through a red light, narrowly avoiding collisions. But that isn't the case on the next junction. The police vehicle is struck hard. Still, Lewis remains undeterred, continuing the pursuit. But as another police vehicle confronts the fleeing SUV, it begins getting rammed into. The police car tilts and skids while the SUV crashes into a pole, capsizing on impact. Lewis slams the brakes and rushes out, camera in hand, ready to capture every intense moment. He signals to Rick to capture footage of the deceased man in the SUV. Yet, as Rick draws nearer, the man inside fires at Rick. He collapses, gravely hurt. In a desperate move, the man shatters the windscreen. He pauses momentarily, locking eyes with Lewis. But as he tries to flee, another police car appears and the officers shoot him dead. The area quickly fills with the wailing sirens of reinforcements. Despite the chaos, Lewis approaches the injured Rick, camera still recording. With weakening strength, Rick questions Lewis about knowing the man was alive and not saying anything. Lewis's chilling response? He didn't want to risk losing a prime piece of footage. Displaying a cold-hearted demeanor, he collects Rick's video equipment and departs from the scene. He immediately heads to KWLA where he presents Nina with the intense video footage from the crime scene. However, the clip ends just before Rick speaks. Nina expresses her astonishment at the footage. While Lewis takes her words as praise, it seems she's in awe about Lewis's approach to even film his dying partner for a perfect video. Just as the station prepares to broadcast the clip, Frontieri and Lieberman appear, demanding the footage. Nina firmly asserts that the video is KWLA's property and will be aired, unless they present a court order. 
Amidst this, Frank pulls Nina aside with an update. He's learned from Joel who got the intel from the police task force about a massive stash of cocaine discovered at the triple homicide location. However, Nina opts to delay this update, sticking to the initial narrative of a home intrusion. Frank is taken aback, noting Nina's growing resemblance to Lewis in her detached and unfeeling demeanor. Inside the police station, Frontieri questions Lewis, probing him about his previous police statement. Lewis crafts a tale, claiming the men in the SUV were trailing him, prompting him to alert the authorities upon spotting them at a restaurant. Frontieri senses the deceit in his story but lacks the evidence to call him out. What truly unsettles her is Lewis's choice to record his colleague in such a dire situation. After their interaction, she departs, leaving Lewis on his own in the room. He later exits the police station unperturbed. As the tale concludes, we witness Lewis rallying his new crew beside his recently acquired video production news vehicles. After a motivating speech, the team boards their respective vans, embarking on their nocturnal ventures. If you've made it this far, thank you. I'd be thrilled to know how you'd score this movie on a scale of 1 to 10 in the comments. Until our next adventure.